Yo, what's up? Dr. Swole here, MD bodybuilder, back with another video. Question for you, are low reps or high reps better for building muscle? Today we're gonna to be answering that question as we talk about the best rep ranges for hypertrophy. Bodybuilders have long debated on the best rep ranges for muscle growth. You'll often hear the eight to 12 rep range being thrown around as ideal. Some people swear by low rep ranges and heavy weights, while some people say that you need to get a pump with high reps. Quick outline for today, we're gonna to really be delving into rep ranges and I'll be talking about individual rep ranges and their pros and cons. Specifically, we'll talk about the one to five rep range, six to 12, 12 to 20, 20 to 30, and greater than 30 reps. This discussion will be focused on hypertrophy or maximizing muscle growth. Once we go into depth into each of these rep ranges and their pros and cons, we'll put everything together to give you some recommendations on which rep ranges you should use. If you've been enjoying my content, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get into it. All right, let's jump into our discussion of rep ranges with the one to five rep range. In terms of pros, the one to five rep range is excellent for building strength, which may help muscle growth indirectly. For building strength, intensity or the weight on the bar is the most important variable to drive progress. So lifting in a low rep range with heavy weight is going to facilitate strength gains. But how does being stronger help us with muscle growth? The answer isn't that clear at this point, but there's likely an indirect effect where being stronger can help you with your hypertrophy training. When you look at the mechanisms for muscle growth, developing mechanical tension along the muscle fibers is the most important mechanism. And in theory, if you're stronger and you're able to lift more weight with each rep, you're gonna be building more mechanical tension with each set. Now, the next advantage of the low rep range is that each rep is highly stimulative for hypertrophy. And this is even if you're farther away from failure. Now, as you know, I typically recommend training to about one to two reps away from failure. However, if you're lifting heavy in the one to five rep range, you can be a little bit farther away from failure and still have a really good stimulus from every rep. Basically, once you go beyond a certain threshold of weight, you're gonna be getting really good muscle recruitment even if you're fairly far away from failure. The last advantage of the one to five rep range is that it targets fast twitch muscle fibers. Our muscles all have fast and slow twitch fibers and using heavy weight with low reps will preferentially get your fast twitch fibers. The nice thing about training your fast twitch fibers is that they have more potential for growth than slow twitch fibers. Note that this effect will be more important for fast twitch dominant muscle groups like the chest, triceps, and hamstrings, for example. Now that we've talked about the advantages, let's move on to the cons of the one to five rep range. In terms of disadvantages, first of all, the one to five rep range produces a lot of fatigue for the amount of volume that you get out of every set. Using heavy weight is very taxing on the body and it will produce a disproportionate amount of fatigue per unit volume, especially if you look at volume in terms of sets times reps times weight lifted. So for example, if you're doing squats and you try to get all of your volume doing heavy doubles or singles, you're gonna be more fatigued than if you generate the same amount of volume through say sets of six to eight. This is probably the main disadvantage of the low rep range because fatigue becomes a greater and greater player as you become more advanced. Our bodies have a limited amount of recoverability resources. And as you become more experienced, you're gonna to have to use your fatigue wisely. If your body doesn't recover properly, it won't be able to repair itself and optimize muscle growth. Now, the other disadvantage of the low rep range is higher injury risk. And this comes in two flavors. First of all, you have a higher acute injury risk. If you're using really heavy weight, you just run more of a risk of tweaking something. This applies even more so for isolation movements. So for example, there's really no point in trying to train in the one to five rep range for bicep curls. Lastly, using really heavy weights tends to produce more connective tissue stress. This doesn't apply to everyone, but a lot of people will find that using heavier weights will tax their joints and their tendons more. All right, now let's move on to talk about the six to 12 rep range. Starting off with the pros, first of all, the six to 12 rep range has a great stimulus to fatigue ratio. Basically, this is what we were talking about earlier in terms of how much fatigue you generate per unit of productive volume. It's been shown in the research that you can build muscle with a variety of rep ranges. In fact, as long as you're lifting more than about 30% of your 1RM, you're gonna be good in terms of hypertrophy stimulus. And this translates to training in the one to 30 rep range, as long as you're within a few reps of failure. So ultimately, when we're looking at these rep ranges, we're gonna be weighing the pros and cons in terms of more practical effects. So the good thing about the six to 12 rep range and probably its biggest benefit is that you get lots of stimulus 
but not too much fatigue per set. This means you can accumulate a lot of stimulus without tiring yourself out and depleting your body's resources. Now the next pro of the 612 rep range is that you start to generate some metabolic stress. In terms of pathways to hypertrophy, we have mechanical tension, muscle damage, and metabolic stress. Metabolic stress happens when you build up the byproducts of hard training. And this tends to happen more as your sets become longer. There's not a lot of strong evidence to say that metabolic stress is a big player in hypertrophy, but I still think it's one that we should be keeping in mind. Lastly, the 6 to 12 rep range is anecdotally very popular. This is a very low level of evidence, but it's still something to keep in mind considering that a lot of people have had success with it. Now, what are the cons of the 6 to 12 rep range? First of all, it becomes monotonous to train here all the time. You'll see a lot of bodybuilding programs where all the sets for all the different muscle groups are just in the 8 to 12 rep range. First of all, I think this is going to be inherently suboptimal since different muscle groups and even different exercises are going to do better with different rep ranges. And there's probably also some benefit to having variety in your program. Lastly, it can just be plain boring to train with the same rep range all the time. The other disadvantage of this rep range is that you may not maximally stimulate your slow twitch fibers. All right, let's move on to talk about the 12 to 20 rep range. Starting off with the pros, just like the 6 to 12 rep range, the 12 to 20 rep range has a great stimulus to fatigue ratio. So it's gonna be a very efficient way to train overall. Now the stimulus to fatigue ratio is a very core concept in bodybuilding. And if you wanna learn more about it, you can check out my interview with the pioneer of this concept, Dr. Mike Isertel. Him and I had a really deep dive conversation on this topic. Now the next pro of the 6 to 12 rep range is that you get less connective tissue stress. Typically when you're using lower weights, you're putting less stress on your joints and tendons. As we get into these higher rep ranges, you get good metabolite buildup. So if you're thinking about that metabolic stress route to hypertrophy, then this rep range is gonna be good for that. Lastly, again, with the higher rep ranges, you're gonna stimulate slow twitch fiber as well. Muscles that tend to be more slow twitch dominant are going to be your side delts and your calves. Moving on to the cons of the 12 to 20 rep range. First of all, you're gonna get less strength development as you use lighter weights. So for example, if you really wanna get strong in the squat, bench, and deadlift, you probably don't wanna stay in this rep range all the time. The other thing is, a lot of people will find that as they get higher in reps, this can get more mentally taxing. If you're really truly going to one rep shy of failure, doing a set of 20 can be very tough. Moving on, let's talk about the 20 to 30 rep range. First of all, in terms of advantages, this rep range gives you low connective tissue stress. This can be particularly useful for people who have chronic injuries. Often, people who are struggling with injuries may have trouble lifting heavy weights. And knowing that you can still build muscle in these lower rep range is good to know. The other thing is you'll get a high metabolite buildup as you get to these high rep ranges. Metabolic stress is not our primary pathway to hypertrophy, so you probably shouldn't prioritize this rep range, but it's still one you can consider. Lastly, higher rep ranges are gonna be good for your slow twitch fibers. Note that when I talk about 12 to 20 reps and 20 to 30 reps being good for slow twitch fibers, we're not excluding fast twitch fibers here. In fact, as long as you push to within a few reps of failure, you're gonna end up exhausting all of your fibers anyways. Talking about the disadvantages, the 20 to 30 rep range is very painful. As you get to these high rep ranges, you really need to push to within a few reps of failure in order to get a good hypertrophy stimulus. And this becomes very mentally taxing since you're producing a lot of metabolites and your body is just gonna be on fire. In fact, for a lot of people, when they train in these high rep ranges, they aren't actually going close enough to failure to get a really good effect. The other thing is, as we get to higher rep ranges, as we talked about earlier, you're gonna get less strength development. Lastly, touching on the greater than 30 rep range, this rep range is just suboptimal for muscle growth. As I said, you wanna be lifting more than 30% of your 1RM, and once you get beyond 30 reps, your weights are just gonna to be too light for an optimal hypertrophy stimulus. So definitely something to consider. And if you're say stuck at home and you have limited access to gym or weights, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you make your exercises harder to make sure that you're getting challenged in less than 30 reps. All right, so my phone died, but anyways, we're back with some recommendations. Now that we've talked about all the different rep ranges and their pros and cons, which rep ranges should you use? My overarching recommendation in terms of rep ranges is to perform two thirds of your volume in the six to 12 rep range and the rest outside of that rep range. The easiest way to do this is to just take your weekly number of sets and divide it among different rep ranges for different exercises. 
For example, say you're doing 15 weekly sets for your chest, you might do 10 sets in the 6 to 12 rep range and 5 sets outside of that rep range. Those reps outside of the 6 to 12 rep range could fall below, say sets of 5, or above, say sets of 12 to 20. The important thing I want to stress here is that you want to be experimenting with different muscle groups and with different exercises. You want to be considering each of your muscle groups as having separate programs to an extent and this includes rep ranges. I've given you some typical examples of more fast twitch muscles versus more slow twitch muscles to guide you, but everyone differs slightly in their fiber type composition. So you might be overall more fast twitch for certain muscle groups and more slow twitch for certain muscle groups. The other thing is that your ideal rep range will vary for different exercises. Let's talk about some specific scenarios. First of all, think about using lower rep ranges for heavy compound movements. Specifically, your main free weight exercises in the major compound movements like squat, hip hinge, horizontal press, vertical press, vertical pull, and horizontal pull are going to be good for lower rep ranges. These movements tend to be safer when moving heavy weights, plus they would be really painful to go into that metabolic high rep territory. Next, in terms of low rep ranges, there's not much point in going below 5 reps if you're a beginner. If you're in your first 1-2 to two years of serious training, I'd really stick with the 5-20 to 20 rep range. Even if you want to build some strength as a secondary focus, you're still going to get lots of gains from that. Now, say if you're intermediate or advanced, and you've been training seriously for 2 years or more, or if you have strength priorities, like if you're power building or even power lifting, then it makes sense to include some sets of 1-5 to five reps. As we said, these low rep heavy weight sets are going to be good for strength development. And strength can have an indirect effect on hypertrophy. Now, going on to lighter weights and higher rep ranges, I'd recommend that you use higher rep ranges for slow twitch muscles and machine and isolation movements. When I talk about higher rep ranges, I typically mean the 12 to 20 rep range. And it's typically good to save these higher rep ranges for machine type movements where strength isn't a big priority and for isolation movements where it just isn't safe to do really low rep heavy sets. Now in terms of muscles that aren't specifically fast or slow twitch, I'd recommend just having a broad variety of rep ranges, but still focusing on that six to 12 rep range. Going into the extreme territories, more than 20 reps typically isn't practical, mainly because you have so much metabolic pain going on that it's going to limit you from really maximizing every set. Now the caveat here is if you're specifically aiming to do metabolic type training. There might be some application in specifically including metabolite training in your program or having phases that are dedicated to more metabolic type work. However, there are other ways of doing this and the research isn't very strong at this point. Lastly, I'd try to avoid doing more than 30 reps and sets. If you have to do that many reps to get within a few reps of failure, then you're not lifting heavy enough and I'd recommend adding resistance or making the exercise harder. That's all for now, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like the video and leave me a comment below. I'm really good about answering every single one of my comments, so you'll definitely hear back from me. In particular, what are your favorite rep ranges? Let me know. If you want to learn about strength development, check out this playlist where I address a few different aspects of strength training in conjunction with hypertrophy. If you've been getting value from my channel, make sure you subscribe and share the channel with your fitness friends so they can benefit from it too. See you next time.